hello to you and happy new year i hope that the start of 2020 has has begun peacefully and gently for you and i hope that wherever you are in the world watching this that you're well and that um and that the year has begun in a positive way for you um, I want to thank you from all, from the bottom of my heart, for the really warm reception that you gave to me with my return to podcasting in my last episode. I shared elsewhere that I had been feeling quite rusty and quite nervous when I sat down to podcast um, or to film the podcast sections um, the last time. And I think it, when I watched myself back, I could tell it, at times I was a little bit nervous, but to know that so many of you appreciated what I put out and to have read your kind words um, of encouragement and support were so heartwarming and I'm really really grateful for everybody who took the time and the trouble to write to me. Um, as I talked a little bit in my last episode, last year was full of ups and downs with some really positive um, times but also some really difficult times and it is has just continued to be so encouraging for me to have such a swell of warmth and support and kindness from people all around the world um many of whom i i doubt will ever meet in person um but to know that you've come to join me um for a, a short time together it it's really uplifting and i'm so excited to begin this new year by um feeling a a return of um, of creativity and wanting to tell the stories related to my creativity. So I'm looking forward this coming year to experiment and explore um, this medium of podcasting. I don't know how frequently I'll be able to produce a podcast. Um, I don't want to set myself any unrealistic goals because I have my health to look after, which is still um still not great but getting there slowly um and obviously there's my children and my um different uh responsibilities at home um you can probably hear i've got my little <laughs> my little sidekick again today um who since we last um spoke has started becoming that bit more mobile she's on the verge of crawling which <laughs> It's quite a shock as her big brother never crawled anywhere, so uh, yeah. I think um, having the podcast to come back to also is helping me to feel more at peace with giving Woolen Hearted a slight change of direction in view of the changes to my family circumstances and to my health and everything so I'm I'm just so grateful for your kind support and I really look forward to the weeks and months ahead as I'm going to be sharing some of my making with you. So the fire is lit, um, I've got a nice steaming cup of decaf tea in one of our favourite family secondhand pussycat mugs. Um, and I've got some knitting here to talk to you about. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about today is my cardigan, my Gentle Days cardigan that I was working on last time and that I talked about last time. And which I've completely stalled with knitting. I haven't knit on it since we last spoke, um, partly because I started a new project, which I'll talk to you about after, um, but also partly because I tried it on and I realised that it's got a bit of an issue with the fitting yet again. It doesn't quite fit properly. The arms, as I'm starting to knit them, feel a bit tight and the crossover on the front 
is gaping quite a lot. I did measure myself um, before casting on the second time, but um, as I'm still nursing, I'm starting to realise that there's fluctuations uh, in the size of my bust during the day and it seems to be gaping and I'm a little bit unsure now whether I want to continue with this knit because it's a lot of work to to continue. I'm in some ways I'm very near the end. I'm, I've almost completed the bottom um, the bottom section and I know that if I were to sit down, I could get the sleeves knit up in a fortnight. Um, but I'm just not sure what to do. The other thing is, is I had a little break from it because all of a sudden I found myself needing a break from grey. Um, I have almost exclusively only worked in natural sheep colours in the last 12 months um, in both my knitting and my spinning. and. Although grey is probably one of my favourite colours, um, all of a sudden just to have this sea of grey garter stitch on my lap, I've just felt quite uninspired about it and I think had I been certain that the fit were going to work, I would feel more encouraged to continue. So I've given that little break and I'm going to give myself another week to have another break. I'm going to try and fit it again at two different times in the day to see whether um, see whether that fit improves. But I don't really want something that's going to be gaping open because the point, the whole point of this cardigan is to have something to keep me warm. Something that I find really amazing about being a maker of uh, knitted items, crocheted items or sewn um, garments is that... We have this um, power to make the garments fit our bodies exactly. We don't have to just rely on shop-bought, um, off-the-peg items that may be ill-fitting around the bust or ride up a bit or not be the quite the right um, quite the right fit on us. It's why I'm hesitating now to continue with this project because. I really want the fit to be perfect and reflecting on it over the last couple of weeks where I've been giving it a little break I've realised that I've got this great motivation to knit garments at the moment and I think I have the headspace as well um, because the two children are generally in bed quite early in the evening and there's more or less often a couple of hours um, in the evening if I'm not too tired where I can sit and knit and sort of be quite concentrated. Um, but as much as I would like to cast on um, some jumpers and some cardigans for myself, I think that it would be better for me to concentrate my efforts on things for myself into smaller items and accessories, so socks, gloves or mittens, scarves, shawls, hats, things that um, will be less dependent on my body shape changing. And instead I would like to um, spend the motivation I have to knit a garment to finally get around to knitting um, a jumper for my partner. Um, I've promised him a jumper for quite a few years now, I think it's five years ago I bought the wool um, and I did originally cast on um, a jumper for him and I knitted him all the pieces of, I think it's called the Papa Bear sweater, you can find the pattern in Clara Parks' The Knitter's Book of Wool. And I cast it on the year uh, uh, I cast it on in the year after our son arrived and knitted on it diligently throughout the months. Um, but it had to keep stopping and starting putting it down and a needle got broken and um, I knitted the two sleeves at separate times and the up and the short of it was that when it came to assembling the pieces after they'd been washed and blocked, they didn't fit properly. And so I unraveled it. I washed the wool, got the crinkles out and re it up and it sat there waiting. So I'm just wondering whether to fully rip this one back, um, do the same with the wool, give the wool a good wash um, because as I mentioned last time it's full of spinning oil and it's not very pleasant to work with. Um, and give myself a little break and then cast on um, something for my husband. 
The other reason I think this project has been stalling, um, as I mentioned slightly earlier on, was I'm just finding the grey a little bit monotonous um, <laughs> at the moment. Um, and I've been really craving some colour. And I also partly have been wondering whether when I have... Um, when I have unraveled this jumper to skein, um, skein the remaining yarn up. I've been um, wondering whether to skein the yarn up into 50 gram hanks and then experiment if and when I have the time um, with some natural dyeing on it because I have heard that if you over dye grey with yellow, so in my case I would use weld, you can get green and um, at the moment I'm really craving green. Um, I I think becoming a spinner um, really helped me to embrace the grey, the whites, the, the dark browns and blacks um, of the natural sheep colours and those will always be colours that I really am drawn to. Um, but I've got a lot of grey in my wardrobe at the moment and Perhaps it's something to do with um, with spring, um, and um, we were up um, having a lovely winter's picnic a couple of weeks ago in the sun, and I just wandered off on my own for ten minutes and sat on the side of the mountain and looked around me, and I was just overwhelmed with the with the with the colour palette that there was. There was the the browns of the of the uh of the ferns that are all dried out that makes the hillside a kind of rusty brown there was it and the other the, the, the other rocks and then the white of the snow glistening on the mountains but there was the the deepest blue of the there was the the light blue of the sky that was in summer here in in winter here on a sunny day the sky is just so incredibly blue um it was a sunny day so there was the yellow from the sun and then there was all the greens that are not yet present um, that are hiding and asleep at the moment through winter but that I know come April, May will fill the mountain with vivid colour and I came home and I had been um, looking through my stash and thinking about what yarns and what projects I wanted to make in the coming year and I came across um, some balls of yarn and some hanks of yarn that I have had in my collection for quite a while. So there's this green and then there's a sort of a burnt yellow and this light sky blue and then there is a very light grey and a sort of dirty white I have this really strong desire to make something colourful and so last week last time I showed you my basket of happiness which was full of sheepy shades of handspun wool and this time I've got another basket of happiness that is full of yellows and blues and greens and on solstice day i cast on a cozy memory blanket which you may know you start with one square that has a mitered corner and then you attach the next color you pick up stitches along one edge you attach the next color and then you knit another square and then another so it's modular and i've been knitting uh one square per day since the solstice and so far I've made this progress. Hello again. It's been a few days since I was cut off um, from filming Midge Flow, which in a funny way is quite reminiscent of how making goes these days. Um, it's a lot of stopping and starting and getting disturbed and trying to get in a stitch or two in between two feeds or um, doing the washing up or the laundry so 
I think it's uh, it's very much an accurate reflection of this season of my life at the moment. Anyway, that uh, little break has given me the chance to complete um, the row on the blanket that I was working on. So I now have a square of five by five. And I was just about to start talking about the walls I'm using. So usually with a cosy memory blanket, the idea is that um, you use up oddments or scraps from leftover projects, most normally um, sock yarn, I think. And I'm not at the moment um, in my life a great sock knitter. I have been in the past, but I haven't knitted that many socks for quite a long time. So I don't really own any sock yarn, um, whether that be in full balls or... Um, in leftovers so I instead decided to um, dive deep into my sash and seek out um, some two ply um, fingering weight yarns that I had there so I have a mixture of French and British yarns um, these are some British wool from Brittany which is where we lived last year and I love it because they they use the um, the Breton names for the colours. So this is Melen, which means yellow. And then interestingly, these two, the blue and the green, are both glas because in Breton they don't distinguish between uh, blue and green. They use the same word for both colours. So I also have um, another wool from Brittany, which is um, from Bouclen. Uh, oh yeah, these coloured ones were from uh, Les Trois en Bretonne, which is a French, uh, which is a Breton local wool um, association that seeks to um, bring value again to local wools. And then I've also got some off-white, uh, so a tiny bit of grey mixed in, and this is from Aldelaine. And there's also some Tarasconaise wool. Um, the same as in my um, Gentle Days jumper, cardigan. So those are the French wools. And then I had some oddments and some little balls of um, wool from Shetland, from Jameson and Smith, and also Jameson's of Shetland. Let me see if I can find some. I didn't have quite as much of theirs. Um, but I have just put in a little order for some more because I've been really enjoying working with these colours. So there's there's some Shetland wools and so these are from Britain. Yeah, so the, the reason behind um, combining wools from both France and Britain um, in this project is that I'm making something for my home. Um, so I'm hoping it will be big enough to be um, a blanket for the sofa. And if I am really motivated and keep going um, much further beyond my three months, um, it may be big enough for my bed. And I like the way that wool connects me to a sense of place and even more so to a sense of home. Um, I'll talk about this in a future episode, but it was very much discovering wool uh, local to me here in France <clears throat> five years ago that really began helping me to feel um, anchored to this place, um, to these mountains, to this landscape and the traditions here in a way that I had previously as a foreigner felt um, that I had no no place here to call my own, no way of making a place for myself and no kind of anchor point um, in the landscape, in the history, in the surroundings that I found myself in. And I've also found since discovering wool and properly falling head over heels in love with sheep and spinning and uh, knitting traditions, I, I find when I feel a little bit homesick for, for England, which is the country where I was born, I turn to the walls in my stash that come from that place um, and when I can that come from the same area where I grew up um, in Dorset and I, I find a real sense of comfort to know that 
the sheep that produce this wool um, walked along the landscapes that I grew up surrounding me. I also wanted this um, project to be a way of exploring colour in a in a non-pressurised um, in a non-pressurised way so not committing myself to a garment with colour work or whether that be stranded colour work or um, or just a, a garment in one of these colours on its own. I'm hoping that um, by combining colours and playing with colours and having lots of different shades of greens and blues and yellows on this blanket that I will start to um, bring colour in a different way into my wardrobe to complement the sheep shades that are already in it and I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to begin perhaps by knitting myself a shawl or a hat with some colour in it um, inspired by this blanket so yes I'm looking forward to seeing how this exploration of home and colour and feeling at home in colour I'm feeling at home where I am um, unfolds over the coming months and I'll be really looking forward to sharing with you my progress next time um, we meet. <laughs>